just turn, oh, I turned it off. For those of you who wonder why we spend about two seconds working out whether the mic is on, there's a light up here that tells us whether the mic's on, and it's not working. So you've got a 50% chance of it being on. So I have to look at certain individuals who will give me a look to remind me of this number. Anyway, it's on now, isn't it? Happy Easter. Christ is risen. I knew that would work. Good. Unfortunately, I took so long saying that that my iPhone went to sleep. There we go. Yes, it's Easter. We welcome visitors. And uh, indeed, Christ is risen, and we look forward to uh, celebrating that today. I do want to take the opportunity to say thank you to everyone who has uh, done something practical, either in insight or in the background, uh, to support and prepare with diligence all of our Easter activities. I feel they've been very good in the truest sense of the word, and we thank everyone who's been involved in that, particularly as we've been going through Holy Week, but also for the uh, work that I know Jonathan and Sarah have put into preparing us through Lent for uh, the culmination at today's celebration. Next week, this coming week, starting tomorrow, is a bank holiday week. So there are lots of no's in the announcements, okay? So, tomorrow, there is no employment plus. There is a food hub. We thank Major Ron who's uh, got responsibility for that tomorrow, but we will continue with that ministry because that need doesn't go away on a bank holiday. And that will be at 10.30. There is no Tuesday fellowship, which also means there's no lunch after it. Um, there's no songs to practice. Guess what? There's no band practice either. <laughs> there is an employment class on Wednesday. There is no Bible study on Thursday. And Friday, actually, this one might catch her, there's no employment plus for that either on Friday because of uh, Mike's availability. That takes us around to next Sunday when we will again be led by our captains, Jonathan and Sarah, and uh, we're using a theme that I've used many times when I've been preaching it because it's one of my personal problem stroke challenges, and it says, to doubt or not to doubt. And so that would be a good day, I'm sure. Reminder that the Mission Dreaming Day on the 21st of April at the normal time of the meeting is something that we should be thinking about, which is sort of what do we want this core to look like? What, are we, what activities that we do do we like? What do we think we perhaps don't need to do? What should we do in a slightly different way? And how should we do them perhaps in a different way? That will be led by our divisional team and in good Basingstoke tradition, it will conclude with lunch. It's on the 21st of April at the normal time of the meeting. Um, for those of us who are involved in uh, running or being involved in activities, reminder that we're still record we're in that period where we're still recording the statistics for the number of people attending and the forms are on the uh, well, all in the foyer. We do ask for your prayers for various people. Um, as many of you are aware through the WhatsApp group, but uh, Beth, um, Beth Hurley uh, had the news yesterday that her granddad had gone into a hospice and so she is uh, visiting him and obviously the family are concerned about that and a number of that family including Andy of course are currently away with the staff songsters in the States so um, particularly challenging time for Beth and the family so we ask for your prayers and Margaret Ely, where's Margaret? Margaret, Margaret's had a, a sad time in her family over the last uh, couple of weeks actually uh, and already having lost two relatives and close friends and loved ones Yesterday, she uh, lost her brother who was, has passed away. So we're thinking of you, Margaret, in prayer at this time. But now we celebrate Easter. May God bless you. Stuart did miss one thing before, uh, before we uh, begin. We've got two birthdays, one today and one coming up this week, haven't we, Rob? So it's Sarah's birthday today, and there is cake afterwards. And uh, Rob let slip that it was his birthday this week, so uh, if we can sing together. <laughs>
Today we celebrate this great, I love coming out of Lent. And I love coming, able to come and do the positive, the uplifting, the celebratory uh, messages. And today we celebrate the truth that Jesus is alive. And as, as we, had a, we had a practice run earlier with Stuart, but we're going to go through it again. So we're going to say, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And we're going to sing that stirring song that the band uh, introduced to us earlier. Lo, in the grave he lay, but with the chorus, up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. Let's stand as we worship God this morning. comes from the Gospel of Mark, verses six, chapter 16, verses 1 to 7. And this morning we're reading from the message. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they could embalm him. Very early on Sunday morning, as the sun rose, they went to the tomb. They worried out loud to each other. Who will roll back the stone from the tomb for us? Then they looked up and saw that it had been rolled back. It was a huge stone. And they walked right in. They saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed all in white. They were completely taken aback astonished. 
He said, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, the one they nailed on the cross. He's been raised up. He's here no longer. You can see for yourselves that the place is empty. Now, on your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going on ahead of you to Galilee. You'll see him there, exactly as he said. It's time for an awful joke. Outside a castle drawbridge, there are three milk bottles. Two of them are full, and one is empty. What's the name of the king of the castle? Any ideas? Philip the Third. Did you get it? Philip the Third. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm here all week. No, I'm not. <laughs> so having survived my really bad joke, Actually, I can't take any credit for it. I didn't write it. I found it somewhere else. I have three empty milk bottles. I'm going to need a glamorous assistant. Hold that one to start off with. Now, believe it or not, these three empty milk bottles can help us to understand the amazing surprise of that very first Easter. And that's because there are three empties in the Easter story. The first empty <coughs> is that when the friends and family of Jesus had seen the empty cross, Jesus really had died and been taken away, so the cross was empty, which left them feeling empty too. The second empty comes when they had discovered the empty tomb on that first Easter morning. Jesus really had risen and was no longer in the grave. But this caused confusion. What had happened to him? Where was he? And the third empty is when the disciples had experienced empty lives without Jesus after he had died. But now, now they were filled again with the presence of Jesus. And because now they understood what Jesus' job was and they believed, they had a new life inside them forever. They were no longer empty. And that's how three empty milk bottles help us to understand the surprise of that first Easter. Easter reminds us that we too can be or feel empty. But as we see God, we are filled with him and discover real life. This is why we live by the code which Jesus has given to us. To live lives in which we seek God above all else, in which we do unto others as we would have them do unto us. False gods of this world pretend that happiness is found in serving and pleasing ourselves. But Jesus tells us that real peace and true joy comes only from loving God with all our heart, with all our mind and soul, and loving our neighbour as ourself. At times we might be encouraged to think that fighting our own corner and looking after our own lives is the most important thing and will bring us happiness. But Jesus shows us through Easter that we will only ever be able to discover life when we are willing to live it and give it in service of God. Life is full of difficulty 
and death. But God is full of life, and so are we, because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I want to share with you this video that just helps us to understand a little bit more about that emptiness of Easter. You ever wonder who came up with eggs and bunnies to uh, celebrate Easter? Kind of a contradiction in terms, isn't it? I mean, I guess I could Google who did it, but who wants to work that hard? <laughs> Whoa, all right, we're doing this now, okay. All right. And to be honest, I don't really care who came up with it, because there is something just a little bit magical about popping open one of these eggs, am I right? I mean, anything can be in here. Toy, candy, money. And then occasionally, you, you have the unfortunate luck of finding the empty ones. Maybe an empty egg is a better symbol for Easter than a full one. Okay, take the very first Easter morning, all right? Uh, we have hindsight as our benefit, but Jesus' disciples, they, they were so confused of what was going on. They didn't even have a clue. Okay, so Mary Magdalene, she gets to the tomb first, and when she goes inside, and what does she see? It's empty. She is completely distressed. So she runs to John and Peter, and they go to the tomb, and what do they see? It's empty. Empty is a, uh, a negative word, isn't it? My stomach is empty. The gas tank is empty. The house since the kids left, it's empty. Empty just feels like disappointment. And on that very first Easter morning, nobody knew the word empty better than Jesus' followers. They had empty hearts, and they had empty hope. Just help me in! I got you, buddy. You see, the thing about Jesus, he takes empty things and he fills them. Empty tombs become resurrected miracles. Empty hearts get filled with love and empty hope overflows with everlasting purpose. Yes, Jesus specializes in empty. Here you go, buddy. Jesus emptied himself for our sake that we may be filled with love meant to save the world. I don't know about you, but nowadays when it seems like we wake up and we are more isolated, alone, empty. But maybe this is true between all the eggs and the bunnies and the beans and every other activity. Can I ask you a question? Will you allow Jesus to come into your emptiness? Let us pray. God of glory, by the raising of your Son you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned and the new way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Risen Lord Jesus, victorious over death, in compassion for your troubled friends, you appeared in many places that they may dare, might dare again to trust in a world full of so much fear. Strengthen us also with signs of your presence. Meet us on the way so that we might be no longer afraid. Free us from everything that would lead us to doubt your love for us and for the world and inspire our witness to the joy and the hope of your resurrection. Risen Lord, there is so much that we don't understand. We celebrate, Easter on, celebrate on this Easter morning the glory of your victory over death, and with it the blessed assurance that through you we now have access to the kingdom of heaven. 
We are filled with joy, but we are also confused. What does it mean in our lives, this news of a resurrected Lord? How are we in the 21st century affected by it? In what ways are we changed? What will tomorrow bring? Just as Mary, in her discovery of the empty tomb, was so focused on the issues of her life that she failed to recognise him standing before her. We too struggle with seeing your presence in our lives. You are the risen Lord, and we sing loud hosannas in celebration of this. But then we return home and focus on the issues that fill our days. Lord, we pray that you open our eyes and our hearts to your love and glory, creating us a spirit that focuses only on you. Transform our hearts and send us off into the world to do your work. Rise again, Lord, in our hearts, so we can truly become the children of God we have been created to be. O oh Lord, by triumphing over the powers of darkness, you prepared our place in the new Jerusalem. Grant us, who have this day given thanks for your resurrection, to praise you in that city of which you are the light, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. During this week we've looked at different aspects of Jesus. We've looked at him as a servant, as someone who was betrayed, someone who was crucified, but today we celebrate his resurrection from the dead which gives us hope for our eternal life. And so we want to give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given us Jesus Christ. And now let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for me. So we're going to play this lovely tune, and then we're going to play it again, and you can sing along with it the second time. Here's to give thanks. <coughs>
Keith Band. And now the worship band are going to continue to lead us in song as we sing See What a Morning. Please stand up as we once we're ready to join us in. with us as we sing together. See what a morning, gloriously bright, with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem.
Father, as we bring our tithes and offerings, may they be an offer of affirmation of our search for the risen Christ, the one who challenges us to see beyond our own expectations. Bless our giving and help us to discover the transformative power of the living Jesus in our lives. In the holy name of our risen Saviour, we pray. Now the songsters are going to bring us this gift.
Our second reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 11 to 21. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us, so that you can answer those that take pride in what is seen, rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them, and was raised again. So from now on, we, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. For God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message <coughs> of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness. worship group are going to come again to lead us with my redeemer bliss I'd like you to stand as we sing together these proclamation words. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in his name. Let's sing together these words of celebration. <laughs>
How many of you had chocolate for breakfast? <laughs> Come on, be honest. Who's broken into the Easter eggs already? Yes, no, Lily, James? Yes? Yes. It's all right, your secret's safe, it's okay. <laughs> Today is a day of great joy and celebration, and it's not because we get to eat lots of chocolate, and not because it's my birthday. <laughs> Just like Peter, one of the disciples who saw the empty tomb on that first Easter Sunday, we celebrate the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. This day is recorded for us in the Bible to remind us of our living hope in a living Lord. Yes? Yes. yes. You have living hope in a living Lord. Be more excited. Yes. Let me share with you one of my favorite verses that shares and shows us the joy that we have in that. It's from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. The resurrection means the raising of Jesus from the dead. From death. To life. When Jesus came back to life, he was raised with a new body, ready for the new creation in heaven. Jesus is that first person ready for heaven. And because this happened to Jesus, if we believe and trust in him, it will happen to us too. In fact, it's already started. And that's what this passage means by new birth. Because Jesus died on that cross, we can enjoy new life. The day we became a Christian, whether we can remember it or not, was the day our new life started. One day, we will have a new body that is ready for heaven. A body that is perfect. One that won't grow old, that won't get weary, or achy, or break, or die. Just like Jesus' new body. This is the living hope that we have. This is our forever hope that nothing can destroy. But we're waiting. Let me explain what I mean. It's like an Easter egg hunt. Imagine you've seen mum or dad or friends, somebody, walking out the door to hide your Easter eggs. So you know what to expect. You know what's coming. <coughs> you know that soon they'll let you go outside and find those eggs. It's just that right now, for a little while, you haven't got them yet. In fact, I've done that this morning. I have hidden eggs around the room. So from your seat, without moving, I wonder if you can find my five plastic eggs. There's lots of one. There's one over there, so that's one. One there, that's two. Excellent. Brilliant. You found them all. Now. <coughs> you found them all. You know where they all are. It's just that right now, for a little while, you haven't got them. Yet. You're waiting until it's time for the egg hunt to begin so that you can have the eggs. And you're excited. You can hardly wait. The excitement builds because you know what's coming. You've seen the eggs. You know they're real. You know that they're ready for you. 
You're just waiting until you can have them. It's just that very last part you're waiting for. And in the same way, we have seen Jesus come back to life. The stone was rolled away. The tomb was empty. There were angels there to explain it. We're sure that Jesus' new life is real. And now we already have our new life because we believe. But now we're just waiting until we can have our new bodies like Jesus' body. So all this talk of eggs and chocolate... Shall we give them an egg? Come on. you decide whether you're going to eat it now or save it for later. In the passage that Jonathan read earlier on from Corinthians, Paul makes it clear that our new life on this earth is not just for our sake. We are reminded that Jesus died for all and that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. That's Jesus. If you didn't know that, that's Jesus. If we have accepted the gift of new life, then our response should be to live our lives for him. Jesus has given his all for us. And as Ian reminded us in our reflection on Tuesday evening, as we prepared to sing, when I surveyed the wondrous cross, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Paul makes it really clear what our response should be. Having ourselves been reconciled, or in other words, brought back to God, and our relationship with him has been restored, we are all called by him to help others to come back to him, into that same right relationship with God, to know him and to love him completely, and to live our lives in the way that he wants us to. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though we are making his appeal to other people through us. So this morning, we invite you, on God's behalf, to be restored this Easter and brought back to God and to receive the life that he wants for you. At Easter, we celebrate new life with chocolate eggs. Whose life are we celebrating? Jesus. Jesus' new life after death and ours. The challenge for each of us today is who can we bring to Jesus this year so that they too can celebrate that new life in Jesus? So this morning... Go from here to be his ambassadors. Live your lives in his service and draw others to him. Let's pray. <coughs> Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his mercy has given us a living hope through his Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for sending Jesus to die for us. And we praise you that Jesus didn't stay dead but rose again. We thank you for the new life that you have given to each of us. And we thank you 
that we can look forward to being with you in heaven, in our new bodies. Amen. Amen. Our final song this morning speaks of that eternal glory. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering son. Endless is the victory, thou or death hast won. Let's stand as we sing together. blessing and benediction over us all. Lord God of resurrection, Christ was raised on the first day of the week. As we go into the days which lie ahead, may we know your risen power and strength, that you know us by name, and may, be the, and may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and always.